Hi there and welcome back to the first marketing school. In this uh, video, we are going to talk about the plugin which is named uh, Qed uh, Tracking used uh, within uh, Matomo Analytics. So the typical use case is the following one is that uh, when you get some traffic on your website, you are getting in fact uh, some uh, requests to your server in order to collect the data. Okay, so you have the JavaScript, which is fired, and then this JavaScript is then grabbing data about the visitors and uh, passing them through a PHP request. So that's the one uh, that you can see over here, the PHP request with all the different data which are sent uh, to Matomo. And of course, if you have uh, too many data, such as uh, those coming in, and that you don't have the right server configuration in front of it, then high chances that the server collapse and then it's not recording uh, all the data. So in order to avoid this, you can install the following plugin, which is called Qed Tracking. And what this plugin is doing is that in fact, it's storing all the requests of the users within um, an alternative database, let's say. And um, so it can also be the same uh, database, the one of Matomo. This, in fact, it's not collecting all the data. It's just collecting the request in itself. And it's waiting for a specific threshold to be reached in order to re-inject actually those tracking requests uh, within Matomo Analytics. So in order to install it, that's uh, very easy. Uh, so as most of the plugin within Matomo, you just need to look for the plugin named Qt Tracking. And uh, when you install it, uh, you have the choice between uh, two databases. So in my case, I'm just going to use the one of uh, MySQL in order to start. I'm just going to put the threshold at, at five. So um, the plugin, you can activate it and deactivate it at any time. For example, here you just need to uh, uh, untick or check this box uh, if, um, if you want it, if you want to activate it, then uh, you need to indicate. So, uh, here I'm not 100% sure about this given setting, but from my understanding is that the more traffic you're going to have, then um, the more uh, CPU you can use on your server in order to be able to handle even more traffic. But just for the sake of this tutorial, and as I don't masterize this given feature, I'm just going to let it at the default one, which is one. And then here's the number of the requests that you would like uh, to process. Um, that you would like to store within this alternative database until uh, sending all the batch up to uh, to Matomo. And uh, if I if I save it, uh, what's going to happen is that if I go on my on my website. So um, oh, by the way, I just want to show you something which is which seems to be great. Um, with it. So I'm just going to disable it for one second and just going to look at the the loading time you see here it's um 145 i'm gonna do it again uh, over here here it's um 100 let's say and 300 millisecond and if i activate actually this given feature the q enabled over here and if i refresh the page as you can see the loading time decreased um oh okay okay you have the feeling that actually it makes the loading time decrease i'm just gonna reactivate it um i'm gonna disable it uh and see if it's changing anything yeah you see clearly i have the feeling that by using this plugin, you get as well a significant uh, decrease in terms of, I'm just gonna reactivate it, and just a significant decrease in terms of loading time for the PHP, which I think is, is always good to have. You see, it's kind of significant. You see that it has been dropped by kind of three quarter or anything like this. And not get any 300 here as you can see so i have the feeling that this plugin is really good in terms of uh, loading time for the php request which of course makes sense because all the data are not processed just the request um so here i generated a lot of requests those requests are viewable directly within uh, 
uh, within your MySQL database. Uh, in fact, they are listed over here. So you have additional tables, uh, which are going to be set. And the one that you can see over here, the queue tracking QB1 and this one, um, which are in fact storing every time that I'm having a look at the page. Okay. I'm getting those additional requests. Sorry for that. Steps, steps. Okay, here you see the requests have been uh, have been sent, and then you can, of course, uh, all those requests are binary files, so that's the reason why you cannot uh, see them straight away. But thanks to the pieces of advice of Lucas, uh, you can use a request such as this one in order to, in fact, look as within uh, the binary file and convert it. And as you can see, this is what you get over here. If you convert it, you get in fact the full requests which are sent uh, like this. Um, so that's one way to set it. The other way to set it is by not using MySQL, but to use Redis instead. And uh, when you use Redis, of course, you need to install uh, Redis first on your computer. So in order to install Redis uh, on your server, so in order to install Redis, you need to run a uh, sudo apt install php redis. And then you need to restart uh, your, uh, your server. And as well, um, I did not mention it uh, over here, but um, you will need um, PHP, or maybe that's what I have over here. Uh, so do in, uh, so this is this line of code is in order to have the extension which report Redis for PHP. Uh, but before that, uh, you need to install Redis, and there's uh, just uh, one single uh, line of code that you need to execute in order to uh, install Redis on. Uh, Sorry, I don't think I'm gonna get it. Um, I get it. Oh uh, yeah, you need to run sudo apt install Redis server in order to have uh, Redis running. And then once uh, Redis is on, then that's uh, exactly the same thing. Instead that um, instead of sending the data to MySQL, you are sending them to to Redis, and Redis has the reputation of being uh better in terms of performances it's just that in terms of loading time um i didn't see a big difference between my sql and and redis um over here but definitely better than not having the queued uh, tracking uh, set at all and that's uh what i wanted to to show you actually once redis is installed you don't have much settings to do here the big difference is really here the uh, you should look at the, you should send the data within the right database, or either one, either two, or whatever, but you just need to mention this uh, over here. Um, and that's it. So here the, you have the same question, um, enable queue, um, the number of CPUs, and as well, how many requests you want to send as uh, bulk. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.